uh, Hola. game one of Carry and Crown, and this one is The Haunting of Harrowstone. And um, you all have um, received a notification that a friend of yours, uh, Professor Petros Lorimore, Type that out for you. Um, has died, and his daughter, Kendra, has invited you all to her father's funeral, and You all have decided to attend the uh, funeral of your near and dear friend. In the town of uh, Ravengro. And Ravengro is a uh, Ravengrow is a uh, small little town in Usulov. Put my sticky there. And you all are, the letter instructs you to meet up outside the, um, the cemetery. And got a map coming to you. Okay. Uh, you're gathered at the entrance to the Restlands. Uh, you see images. Uh, this elegant lady who you are uh, assuming is uh, Kendra Lorimore, the professor's daughter. And there's several other... Um, There's a couple of other uh, gentlemen standing around. Um, up on the hill, you can see looking up there. Up in the uh, top middle of the uh, cemetery, uh, you can see a um, undertaker and uh, two grave diggers. Um, when you get there, everything's just getting ready to start. And um, Kendra asks, uh, who would like to uh, be pallbearers? And she's uh, looking around at you all. Darius will step forward. I I'd be glad to help carry him to his final rest. On now. Kristoff is a little dismayed to get his clothes dirty, but he'll volunteer. <laughs> I will uh, look at my left hand and uh, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so you three uh, take position um, alongside the coffin and so forth. Um, 
a couple of the other bystanders uh, offer to join in to make it an even six men. And guys, give me just a second to. I hope this doesn't turn into strength checks where the coffin will fall down and roll open. <laughs> Uh, you never know. <laughs> if these villagers have figured out to chain shut their coffins yet, I don't know how to help them. Should we get some physical descriptions of our characters here? Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's a good place to get started. Um, while you're all picking up the coffin and everything, uh, it's a good chance for you all to describe yourselves to one another. All right, uh, I'll go first. Uh, I am Vok in TeamSpeak and Lonely Sword in game. Uh, I am a worshiper of Arshia, the goddess of physical perfection. Uh, I lost my hand saving this man's life, but he still went and died anyways, apparently. Uh, so, as I probably indicated just a second ago, I only have one hand. Uh, since I lost my hand and I worship a god of physical perfection, I now wear a mask of uh, penance. Uh, I won't take this off, and I changed my name to uh, Lonely Sword, as I used to be a very famous two-weapon fighter, and I'm not quite capable of that anymore. Uh, I'm wearing cleric vestments that are embroidered with uh, flying swans, and they're red. And that's pretty much it about my guy. Oh, I do have a buckler uh, permanently tied on to my left arm. It's quite a hassle to get it off. <laughs> Would like to go next. All right, I'm uh, Iztail in. Remember, I'm also Eric, and I'm uh, Vidicher Kichev in the game. Well, young looking guy. Generally is that has... is that the guy from Strange Adventures, or whatever that show is called? Don't know. Just grab the picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, the first time I saw him, I thought he was a girl. That's what I thought when I saw your picture. I thought he was too pretty, right? That worked. Um, so, uh, he, um, generally, uh, broad shoulders, heavy armor. Yeah, looks a little boyish, though, uh, a little young. Other than that, he's been uh, pretty kind to people and um, carries um, a look like um, different holy symbols hanging by winter mute. You're cutting in and out a lot. That a little better? Maybe. Mm, talk a little more. Okay. Yeah, turn uh, to I, said, um, talking. I just need to check. Um, um, I, I, I wanted. To, I didn't get to check with you in time, Winter. Um, he has um a few holy symbols. I was gonna say that I had spent time in Magnamar, and worship a bunch of angels, but who have rather similar um. I lost you right after the rather similar. Um, they have, uh, they would have like uh, similar restrictions. They're all lawful good angels, imperial lords. Uh, oh, uh, I'm a war priest, by the way. I'm guessing you're the paladin. Yeah, I look like one. All right. I figured I should probably mention my class while I was doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly um, littered in a few weapons, um, you know, a warhammer hanging at his side, a great sword, and a dagger in his boot. Not that he hides it. Next. Kristoff <laughs> uh, is average height and build. He's just short of middle-aged. He's dressed in finely cut and fairly nice clothing that would have been the height of trend about 20 years ago. His hair is just a little too long and he has just a little too much beard to be fully presentable. Uh, everything shows signs of 
sort of heavy wear, but somebody who takes some effort in their appearance. He is a little shifty, is a little uncomfortable making eye contact with people, and seems to try to stay towards the back of groups. He's an alchemist. Ah, cool. What kind of alchemist did you make? He's leaning towards a melee type, but I didn't totally forego the bomb capabilities. Bomb is really overpowered at low levels. Uh, I guess it's Darius' turn. Um, uh, again, he, he's a youngish man, you know, probably in his 20s, um, just above average height and build, um, you know, dark hair, kind of scruffy looking. Um, uh, he is also an alchemist. I was... Um, wasn't sure what people were going to play. Um, yeah, we made a forum post for people to post what they're playing. Yeah, no, I only it. mean one other guy did. I'm also happy to switch off after this session, so we can talk. <laughs> we're um, playing fortunately different. Um, I went with, I built my alchemist to kind of fill in to, you know, be able to throw out some heals and to be able to kind of take a rogue's place with traps. Um, so, it, it, you know, we're, we're playing very different kinds of alchemists. Alchemist is an extremely versatile class. Yep. I didn't say I'm a paladin alchemist. It... <laughs> oh, you heard the mention that part, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, guys, I actually uh, variant multi-class alchemist for my war priest. We're sorry, Darius. Go ahead, continue. <laughs> no, no, that was it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, a little bit. He's. Um, he has the kind of look of someone who's probably spent a lot of time at, you know, um, Uslov is very famous for its schools. He looks like that's, you know, kind of Indiana Jones here. He teaches and then he goes out raiding grips. Sounds like you used to play in Mummy's Mask. I have not, but yeah, he would fit in there well. <laughs> Got another job if this one doesn't work. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, cool. All right. Um, now that everyone's been introduced and so forth, and uh, the it's time for the uh, procession to get started. Um, the three of you uh, pick up the. Um, you pick up the heavy coffin and you start following uh, Kendra and the crowd up through the. Um, I would. Uh, I'd like the to graveyard. Walk beside the widow and uh, say some prayers as we go. Sorry, did we just arrive in town? And if so, would it be appropriate for us to throw our gear to the side somewhere? I don't think I want to be carrying a large pole arm into a funeral. Mm. Uh, you could uh, probably stash, stash it by the gate. <laughs> okay. Uh, they they realize that you all have been invited, and it took you a while to get there, and you're just making it. So, you know, um, they're not gonna think too much about it. And um, the party makes it up to the uh, crossroads right there, carrying the. Uh, coffin and it veers to the north uh, which is uh, the traditional route and when you get up to midways like the map That was pretty wild, because once I let go of the mouse, one of them moved all the way back down the map. 
<laughs> oh, I didn't realize you were grabbing them at the same time I did. <laughs> That's a good there. And let's see. Caught up. Okay. Um, you get about halfway up, and there is a group of men that appear, and you know they're coming out behind the bushes and so forth, and they're blocking the road. And one gentleman in particular, let me get rid of that icon, comes up, and you know. He says, that's far enough. We've been talking, and we don't want Lorimore buried in the restlands. You can take him upriver and bury him there if you want, but he ain't going in the ground here. Uh, and you can see Kendra's face. Uh, the sadness is quickly turning into anger. And she cries out, what are you talking about? I've arranged it with Father Grimborough. He's waiting for us. The grave's already been, and this guy interrupts her, and it's like, you don't get it, woman. We won't have a necromancer buried in the same place as our kid. I suggest you move out while you still can. Folks are pretty upset about this right now. Kendra's like, necromancy, are you really that ignorant? And it starts getting into uh, even more heated battle. You know, it, it's on the point that you're concerned that people might lose what little bit of temper they have left and start a real fight. Um, the other people with you, they are, um, where, where is the, uh, wifey at on this picture? Uh, give me just a second. No, throw her on there. So I said I was walking beside her, so I'd probably be over where she is. Yeah. Turn on my letter tokens. I'm so glad they added that search box to the uh, library. <laughs> Kendra. Uh, you'd be up there somewhere. And position these a little better. You all would be right there with the coffin. I have a quick. I imagine my taboo for us. You're just you're just cutting in out. I I heard three words there. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Can, is that better? I. Yeah, a little so better. I, um. Is it? I don't know if this is basic religious knowledge, but is it taboo for us to put the coffin down before we get to um, where he's to be interred? Uh, no. Okay, um, so I'm going to actually uh, speak to um, Darius and Christoph and I guess three other men who I don't know the name of. Perhaps. Down. Solved They're the coffin by having it fall open if they rambunctious. I heard fall open and rambunctious. <laughs> Does that keep happening to everyone for me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, last time I talked to you on Team Speak Winter, was there a, was this? Uh, it wasn't as bad. Uh, I thought you kept moving your mic away during that time. What kind of internet do you have? Bios. What's that? Fiber optic. Yeah. What? Really? 
That's why I'm surprised it's not working. <laughs> <laughs> I've had TeamSpeak issues before that got solved just by closing it and reconnecting to the server sometimes. Yeah, yeah did, I've had did. that. Um, you know, so I did have a lot on. I was running a game earlier, and I didn't really shut my computer. A lot of stuff. All right, so why don't um, why don't I shut down, and I will rejoin everything. I don't want to have that be a problem all night. I'd rather take the time now to solve it. Yeah, that's good. I'll be back as soon as I can. Continue. Have fun. Good luck. <laughs> Hurry up. It's being heavy <laughs> holding this coffin. <laughs> well, we're putting it down. Put it down. Put it down. Let's put it down. Well, He's the only I, one of us who has diplomacy. I'm just going to step forward and say, this is incredibly disrespectful. User disconnected and I must channel. insist that you step out of the way. And he might not be able to tell it, but I'm very angry. <laughs> um... Do you want to accompany that with a? <laughs> <laughs> or would that be would that be diplomacy or intimidate? I don't even know. Uh, how are you saying it? Nicely or angrily? <laughs> well, uh, well, my guy kind of talks uh, very calmly at all times, but his face kind of gives him away. However, at the moment you can't see it with a mask. <laughs> So uh, I guess it might be more diplomacy, but I mean it's the same role. <laughs> uh, yeah, he just kind of looks at you and says, "Stay out of it." And uh, he continues, um, "You know, the guys are the thugs are just you know just kind of shuffling around." Um, uh, I'd like to look back at the uh, the madame here and uh, ask her. Uh, what would you like me to do about these fools? She's, um, and I'll uh, I'll pat my uh, weapons that I'm coated with. <laughs> I don't mind moving them out of the way. <laughs> uh, she's like, hopefully it won't come to that. But uh, you know, she's still arguing with the dude. Uh, you can see up in the distance that the, uh, the caretaker is, uh, the undertaker's moving down closer to see what the, <laughs> what the hell's going on, and... If only our pretty boy Paladin was here. I bet he's the charisma. Oh, let's find out. <laughs> Kristoff moves to the back a little bit and is sort of muttering to himself, clearly kind of getting worked User up here. User entered your channel. Hey, he's back. Welcome okay, back. how am I now? We don't know. Well, can you hear Jeez. me better? That well, we can so hear far. you. So far? All right. So far. <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had other programs, like audio programs, running in the background, so I'm hoping by closing everything else out. You certainly sound more clear. Oh, good. Yeah, I agree with that. I heard a whole sentence. So, <laughs> Lonely hey, all right, Sword... Was that bad. All right. Uh, Lonely Sword moved up and tried to, uh, you know, tell the guy that it was disrespectful and failed miserably on his roll. <laughs> uh, did did we put the, the, the coffin down? Yes, the yes. coffin yes, is down. And... Uh, uh, he asked Kendra what what she wanted them to do, and she's like, hopefully it won't come to blows and so forth, but they are still uh, arguing back and forth. Uh, I have a quick question. I, I came back, and I guess you don't get the maps you were on. Of, uh, do I go to if images? You, and... Yeah, I'll be there. If you open the images and maps tab, you should see map the uh, rest just, ones. Somehow it just popped up. So uh, I reshared it. Ah, oh, thank you. But uh, anything that I've shared before, uh, you can access through the images tab and so forth. All right. Um, off and down. Um, are 
Lon uh, Lonely Sword, what, what did you say to them, um, do or say to them that um not cool with? I said it was very disrespectful what they were doing, and I asked them to get out of the way. Oh, okay. Then I, uh, I, looked, I, I looked back at the lady here and asked her if uh, she wanted us to do anything more serious about these fools, but uh, she said it hopefully doesn't come to that, and now we're kind of looking at you. <laughs> Because we're guessing that you are uh, very pretty, and uh, maybe you can show some leg and ask these guys to move out of the way. Sounds good. Um, I go. I, I'm gonna step. I'm gonna go. Why do you think? What leads you to? Be... You're just cutting out now. Now I am. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you Are you sure you're not just letting go of the mic button? Mic button. I don't have a mic button on. That might be your problem. Okay. It works a lot better with push to talk. Yeah. Does it? Okay. That might very well have been what's going on. It just loses track that you're talking and it turns off. Uh, change that in what? Permissions? Uh, Probably settings, options. Tools, set options? Yeah, tools, options, then you would add the hotkeys. I think it's under capture, go. not hotkeys. The capture will work too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I suppose capture does. How's that now? It seems good. Okay, hopefully that will work. So, say, your, say what you're going to say now. I ask them what led them, uh, what leads you to believe that he is a necromancer. Uh, he looks at you uh, very perturbed, and um, says everyone knows that he was a necrom necromancer. You know, all you have to do is just ask anybody in town. I think you are a man above rumor and not so easily fooled by the ramblings of people in bars and would look back upon this day and regret it to find out that you ruined a good man's final rest. And it would be good for you and the men behind you to have the same res hope for the same respect when you're interred. Uh, would you like to make a diplomacy roll with that? <laughs> Better than my two. Uh, absolutely. Um, he kind of, uh, you notice a change in his face. Uh, a little more relaxed. You can tell that he's thinking about what you're saying. So give him about five minutes. Um, he goes back. He takes a five-foot step back and uh... One of the other thugs moves in behind him, and and you can hear them all talking and so forth. And he comes out, and he's like, well, you know, whether he wasn't or not, uh, there's enough suspicion. Uh, we're not going to let him be buried here. And Kendra, or... Yeah, Kendra is just uh, livid at this point. <laughs> You're impugning a good man's name. Move, or you'll be moved. Christoph removes a syringe from his belt and injects himself in the thigh. Whoa. Um, 
You know what? Uh, let's roll for initiative on that one. Okay, uh, Eric, you are up. At at this point in time, you have a, uh, you know, things are getting ready to go south. Uh, if you're talking, we can't hear you. <laughs> ah, I forgot that button. <laughs> this is probably why I don't do it. All right, I get right up in front of him, and I ask him if this is how he wants to be remembered in front of his ancestors. Um, you want to try a, a diplomacy or intimidation? I will try diplomacy again. Trying to be nice about this. Um, you did a pretty good job of that. No kidding. I am trying to be a good person. <laughs> um, and he kind of backs down and he's he realizes that this is probably not a good fight for them to be in. And he's like, um, I will. Uh, guys, let's go. And he turns around and starts to walk off. Unless you want to make an attack of opportunity. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> okay. Um, they start heading their own way and so forth. The situation, uh, you know, you're keeping an eye on them as they go, but it does look like uh, being that threatening to the leader and so forth worked. And they're on their way out of the graveyard. And um, uh, Kendra is much relieved, and you know she's thanking you guys for uh, de defusing the uh, situation. And by that time, uh, Father Grimbrow, Grimbrow. Burrow, what the hell's his name? Grim Burrow uh, comes over and he's like, uh, w "What's going on?" And Kendra gives him a uh, brief explanation that these idiots were trying to prevent them from burying her father in the graveyard. And the father says. Uh, you know, he, he thanks you all as well for uh, not shedding blood in the graveyard. And 
for handling the uh, situation. And, you know, he's apologizing uh, for the thug's behavior. And, you know, as soon as the funeral's over, he's going to report it to the uh, to the sheriff. And uh, he's like, uh, let's continue on with the funeral. And by this time, uh, winter, um, when they're walking away and like, I've gone back to like, to the casket, um, can I just like detect evil in their direction just to make sure nothing hinky is going on? Uh, yeah, you sure can. Um, uh, you're you're not detecting any evil feelings or auras coming from them and they do uh, make their way out of the uh, graveyard without any incident any further incidents and i think i need to take the ape off the combat tracker Okay, uh, are you three still going to carry the coffin? Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'll move back into I'll position. Okay. Um, the procession leads you up on around the corner to the actual. Um, burial plot and uh, <clears throat> Father Grimborough uh, gives a short sermon and then he invites Kendra up to say a few words about her father and you can see tears she's fighting back the tears and so forth and she recounts a few of her father's more courageous or you know selfless moments uh she thanks everyone once again for coming and then invites um you know anyone else would like to uh share a few stories or remembrances and she looks at uh, Lonely Sword. Ah, uh, well, my my I have one story, but it's not uh, quite fit for a funeral. My apologies. <laughs> uh, would anyone else like to uh, make up a eulogy for a guy you really don't know <laughs> that well? Uh, Vidager actually <laughs> says something really quick. He goes, I'd like to remember a man who turned a bully into a better person. Ooh. I had the privilege of corresponding with Rathfasser for quite some time. He, he was a brilliant man. He, he will be greatly missed. Kristoff rambles for a few minutes about a horrible lab calamity that the professor helped prevent during his days at university. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> at the end of it, uh, Kendra, once again, thanks everybody for coming. And you watch the uh, coffin being laid in the ground and the crowd starts to disperse. And... Um, Kendra tells you all to uh, hold on just for a little bit. And she makes her way through the crowd saying her goodbye to the other guest. And uh, after a few minutes, uh, she works her way back over to you. And she's like, uh, I would like to invite you all back to my home for a drink and to hear my father's last will and testament. Are you worried someone is going to contest you? 
Uh, no, you all are mentioned in the will. Which we know, because we're that's why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, one of the gentlemen in the crowd. I just have to step away for one minute. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problem. Uh, you see her, uh, she had talked to this gentleman, and just by looking at him, you could tell he's a, a semi-important person in town, and she goes that, you know, the reading of the will uh, requires uh, Councilman's Hearthmount to uh, be present to read the will to make sure everything's official and whatnot, and he will be joining us shortly. But uh, in the meantime, you all can come and relax from your long journey and have a drink while we wait for the councilman. Most appreciated. I will uh, thank her for the drink, but decline politely. And I will. I will I, I'll, I'll still come in and sit down and everything. I'll just decline the <laughs> drink. <laughs> okay, back. You okay. look different, Lonely Sword, without your mask. I haven't taken my mask off. All right, I just saw a picture of a guy who was messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's some fat councilman. Yeah, he, um, she invited y'all back for a drink and for the reading of the will and stated that the councilman had to be present to read the will and that he would be joining you all shortly. And I shared the map and then closed it on my end. And let me give you a party token. And where are we coming from? Okay, you are actually coming from the top of the map. Which is, uh... Are we at her place now, though? Uh, you will be. Um, I'm showing you the map so you have a good idea of where you're at in relation to the town and whatnot. Um, P at the north is the Restlands, and that's where you're coming from. And Kendra and the professor's house, um... Uh, you all have a nice uh, stroll through town, and she's down at number N at the bottom of the map. Bottom quarter, quarter of the map. Can I ask? Can I ask Kenra why the town thinks that he's a necromancer? If this is something that's going around, if she's heard it, um, I, I'm a little upset about that. Can 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 we talk about that later? Sure. I just want to make sure that those men don't think so strongly as to desecrate your father's grave. I I believe that you know when they sober up a little bit that they're not going to be any issue. Um. Yeah, you know, the uh, Father Grimboro will report him to the authorities, and, you know, I'm sure the sheriff will get right on it. I will take your counsel. Okay. Um, I, she invites you all into... Uh, the, the parlor and so forth and, uh, you know, gives you a chance to drop off your gear and whatnot. Uh, she offers everyone a round of uh, drinks and so forth and says that the uh, councilman should be here uh, any moment. And almost, you know, as if it was planned, there's a knock on the door and 
Kendra excuses herself and opens the door, and you can hear uh, the voice of what you assume to be the councilman. And she comes in and introduces uh, Councilman Hearthmouth to you all. And he uh, uh, goes behind and starts um, as he's being introduced to you. Um, you kind of get the feeling that um, he's not com he's not that keen on strangers being involved in local matters. Um, if he had his way, you'd think that you wouldn't be present at the reading of the will. And no sense motive check is necessary for that. <laughs> Um, but he goes behind the professor's desk and he produces a, a scroll case and he shows everyone that the professor's personal seal is unbroken and he breaks the wax, opens the case, and as he does, the small iron key falls out of the tube and it clatters on the table. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't pay any attention to it. And you can tell he's eager to be done with this and get back home. And he starts to read the will. And I, Petros Lori Moore, being of sound mind, do hereby commit to this parchment my last will and testament. Let it be known with the exception of the specific details below. I leave my home and personal belongings entirely to my daughter, Kendra. Use them or sell them as you see fit, my child. Yet beyond the bequeathing of my personal effects, this document must serve other needs. I have arranged for the reading of this document to be delayed until all principals can be in attendance, for I have more than mere inheritance to apportion. I have two final favors to ask. Uh, to my old friends, I hate to impose upon you all, but there are a few others who are capable of appreciating, but there are few others who are capable of appreciating the true significance of what I have to ask. As some of you know, I have devoted many of my studies to all manners, all manner of evil, that I might know the enemy and inform those better positioned to stand against it. For knowledge of one's enemy is sh the surest path to victory over its plans. And so, over the course of my lifetime, I have seen fit to acquire a significant collection of valuable but dangerous tomes, any one of which in wrong circumstances could have led to an awkward legal situation. While the majority of these tomes remain safe under lock and key at Lippistat University, I fear that I have a, a, I fear that a few I have borrowed remain in my trunk in my Raven Girl home. While invaluable for my work in life and death, I would not prefer to burden my daughter with the darker side of my profession, or worse still, the danger of possessing these tomes herself. As such, I am entrusting my chest of tomes to you posthumously. I ask that you please deliver the collection to my colleagues at the University of Lippistat, who will put them to good use for the betterment of the cause. Yet, before you leave for Lippistat, there is a matter of another favor. Please delay your journey one month and spend that period of time here in Ravengrow to ensure that my daughter is safe and sound. She has no one to count on now that I'm gone, and if you would aid her in settling things in order for whatever she desires over the course of this month, you would have my eternal gratitude. From my savings, I have also willed 
to each of you a sum of 100 platinum coins. For safekeeping, I have left these funds with uh, Emmerbreath, uh, one of my trusted friends in Lipistat. She has been instructed to issue this payment upon the safe delivery of the borrowed tomes no sooner than one month after the date of, re of the reading of this will. And then yada, 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 uh, it's signed by the professor and dated and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> once the will is read, the councilman looks over to Kendra, who thanks him and dismisses him. Um, Kendra kind of puts on a brave face and she thanks you all again for coming and informs you that she'll need at least a few weeks to decide if she wants to sell her family home or to sell her family home or remain here in Raven Grove. Uh, in the meantime, as stipulated by the will, uh, you know, she asks you all to stay. She offers you rooms in her spacious house, uh, promising you free rent and board for the month that, you know, you have to stay in town. And um, she's like, if you will excuse me, uh, I will go fetch the chest that my father mentioned in his will. And she curtsies and exits the room. Can we poke around the room, see what's around us? Uh, yeah, it, it's just a normal. Um, uh, there's a lot of books on the wall. You know, it's it's kind of what you would expect the professor's office to be like. Is the key still on the desk? Uh, yes, it is. Garrus is going up. to snatch about. Oh, okay. oh, I'm sorry. I was going to hand it to one of you. I just pick it up to make sure we don't lose it and be like, if if someone would like to hold on to this. Sure. And Darius volunteers. He seems very excited about, you know, rare books. Yes. I hand it over. Okay. Uh, looking at it, uh, it's just a normal iron key that you would expect to uh, open a chest and a little bit later uh, Kendra comes walking in carrying a chest that's uh, it's relatively small and it's made out of oak and iron and you can tell that she's a little nervous but uh, hands you the chest and says uh, you all already have the key I see and I'm going to give you all the honor of opening the chest. It's very kind of you. Thank you. And Darius will go over and unlock the chest. And it explodes. Everyone dies. Ah! <laughs> I should have used my trap finding. What kind of explosion? Because I'd like to, you know, know how I died exactly. <laughs> <laughs> A small thermonuclear warhead. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Would you like to play a game? Why, yes, I'd love to. <laughs> um, and the, the key fits in the lock perfect, and inside of it, um, I need to add that to... Um, Inside, uh, you find four books um, and a journal sitting on the top, and it has the phrase, read me now, scratched into the leather cover. Commands from beyond the grave, Harris will <laughs> obey. He starts flipping through it. Okay, and you're going to take the rest of the books out, I'm assuming, while you're doing that? Yeah, I'll take a look at them all and move and all for them. Okay, who all is familiar with Fantasy Grounds Party Sheet? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty familiar with that. I know it exists. Um, the 
icon right beside the combat tracker that has the eye with the uh, little people icon. Yep. Uh, that opens up, and then if you will click uh, inventory. And you, under parcel items, you'll see uh, four books and the professor's journal. The professor's journal, the one that said, read me now? Yes. Um, <clears throat> anytime you find weapons or so forth, uh, they all end up on the party sheet, so you all can divide and take what you want. But you find uh, four books. Um, one of them is the uh, Manual of the Order of the Palatine Eye. Um, you, there's a book on verified madness, uh, a book on serving your hunger, and the umbral leaves. And those are the books that you are um, ordered to uh, deliver to the University of Lipistat. Um, Can we ask her if she would mind if we were to peruse the books prior to delivering them? Uh, technically, oh, that's a given. Yeah, they're they're in your care. You can do what you want with them. <laughs> and Besides burning them or shredding them. Weren't weren't we told that these were like evil things that we probably shouldn't be messing with? No, he said that you know he's made a study of them because knowing the enemy's ways makes you better able to counter them. But he does say that the books are dangerous. He does. Yeah, because they're evil. <laughs> so I don't plan on looking at any of them. Um, who has a uh, knowledge religion? You. Uh, it, it, throw me a, uh, throw me a roll. I cannot roll today. Okay. Uh, Vidiger. You, um, you notice that one of the books, uh, the Umbral Leaves, uh, is actually the unholy book of Zion Kuthon, the evil god. Translated into common. Sounds like a lovely read. I'll put that on my nightstand. So it's just um, like their holy book. Yes. Unholy book. <laughs> yeah, but just I meant like their religious right. text. It's not like a, a magical or known like vile special text. But well, you gotta remember, in this magical world, their holy books are actually real. No, I, I'm not. I'm not discounting that. I'm just saying, like, it, it does it have any greater significance than like their common unholy text? Uh, not that you can tell at this point in time. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um, the other book, serving your hunger. Um, it is. You can tell that it's one of several. It's one of several unholy books uh, of the goddess Uragotha. Ur <laughs> Uragotha. And um, that's the gluttony goddess, right? Undead. I know that one. <laughs> cool. Um, Ur can you, you type out the name in chat? Yeah. If you go into the inventory sheet and actually click on the items, it has the descriptions and down the names and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the goddess of gluttony. Hmm. 
maybe she's also gluttony. Ergotha, goddess of disease, gluttony, and undeath. I love it. Yeah, and I, I know that one because I always want the feat that's for her because it's uh, you can drink potions and elixirs as a swift action instead of a standard. Also, physical excess, which would probably be opposed to you. Oh, well, this character, yeah. <laughs> and who's reading the professor's journal? Uh, with all the unholy, unholy stuff going on, um, I am going to detect evil on the texts. Superstitious nonsense. Um... The subject matter may be evil, but the book itself is not. Just making sure none of them have like a specific unnatural power beyond being a book of bad thoughts. Darius will delve into the professor's journal. And the Order of the Palatine Eye... Um, the book covers are rimmed in polished steel, and it's clasped with a small but intricate lock. Um, the keyhole appears to be a strange triangular shaft. Uh, the key is nowhere to be found. And reading the professor's journal, um, you right off the bat, you do realize that the professor did not mention his journal in the will and it's not one of the dangerous tomes that he wanted delivered um but flipping through it um there are several entries that are circled All right, I actually have to head to work now, dude. Vok? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how long will you be gone? Uh, five, ten minutes. Uh, yeah. If no one cares, uh, can we take five? I mean, no, you, guys, you guys can keep sure. going if you want. I don't mind. Uh, it's a good chance for me to grab a sandwich. <laughs> All right. Sure. Coffee. All right. See you in five. User ten. disconnected from your channel. Vok was telling me uh, he plays uh, four nights a week, and he's a security guard at a car lot nighttime. <laughs> what Vok? Yeah. Oh wait, so Vok is at work. And he's going to go do... <laughs> uh, Vok will be at work in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, and he'll play from there. Yeah. Nice. So. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, man, where do you find time to play five or four or five nights a week? Well, you know, it makes sense now. <laughs> All right, I'll go make that coffee. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. 